Hi there everyone, Hayden VK7HH here again for Ham Radio DX and in today's video I'm going to be talking about my VHF and UHF remote station. Uh, here where I live in VK7 in Tasmania, I live in a bit of a valley so I don't get out very well on VHF and UHF. So I set up a remote station uh, not too far from here on top of a mountaintop. It's about 3,000 feet high, about 930 metres for those in metric and uh, it performs quite well. I usually run it on two meters whisper for those who listen in to uh, that as a sort of a beacon to see what uh, conditions uh, are like. So many stations that are on the mainland, uh, they uh, point towards me and they can uh, see what the signal strength is like. But anyway, I thought that I'd show you the view and uh, a few other bits and pieces of the station as well. You can see here, this is the view toward, out towards the west, towards uh, VK or northwest towards VK5 for uh, Adelaide. Quite a good uh, outlook and view. This was a nice day that I took this photo. Uh, this is uh, towards the west and those mountains in the distance, they sometimes have uh, snow uh, in the middle of winter. This uh, particular site definitely gets snow in the middle of winter. And uh, as you can see, there is almost nothing in the way. So winds hit the mountain quite hard. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But uh, there's also a sheer cliff there as well, which makes things very interesting trying to service the antennas uh, on the outside. If you want a bit of an idea, uh, check out uh, my channel. There is a drone uh, video that I've got. I'll put a link up in the cards for those who would like to check that out or down in the description. And uh, it really shows how high and uh, how impressive the view is from this uh, location. And uh, it's also been known to invite a few uh, of a few friends along as well you can see here this little fellow i think he's a little tiger snake uh, the day that i took that he was uh, only about this long and i didn't want to stick around just in case uh, mummy decided to turn up i've also at this site uh, just recently put a six meter vertical antenna i run the zactec whisper desktop transmitter from there runs uh, about 200 milliwatts out on six meters and the beacon works actually very very well it's been spotted all over Australia and also as far as New Caledonia so uh, and Fiji I think as well yeah Fiji so uh, some very good uh, reports that come out from that of course it's a transmit only uh, beacon but uh, nevertheless it works very very well on this site, uh, we also have ADSB, so tracking aircraft on uh, about one gigahertz. So we uh, use that to pipe back into the ADSB network, so other users can look up uh, on the internet and view where flights are and see uh, how far they are away. This particular station uh, works very well for those out towards the west, as I showed in that photo. So the re the remote areas, so uh, low flying aircraft uh, can also be tracked down there as well so very good for safety too uh, in this next photo we've also got uh, that uh, dipole antenna at the bottom which tracks uh, ships on AIS transmits a small beacon uh, every uh, so often can't remember how many every few for every few minutes or something like that and we can track them so uh, this uh, works very well from there too however a few days ago I did unfortunately receive this photo so you can see we've uh, got a tower up on this site and the antenna that is hanging upside down and bent up is a homebrew 2 meter LFA antenna I uh, use this uh, again I use this on the whisper beacon on 2 meters uh, from this uh, site I've also used it um, for contacts um, to VK5 in Adelaide uh, to VK3 in Victoria, so sort of uh, up to about a thousand kilometers there, and also to New Zealand as well. I've spoken with ZL1IU on this many, many times, so I was a bit sad to see that this had happened. And the reason for it is the we had some very, very high winds last week that uh, smashed into the side of the mountain and unfortunately smashed my antennas as well. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, it was looking a little bit sorry. You can see that the elements were all bent up and a bit bent out of shape. So I decided I had to go there the other day and I did manage to remove the 2 meter antenna. The point of failure was, as you can see, just, uh, just there is the bracket that holds it to the mast. There was a couple of other uh, brackets that were holding the antenna to that bracket and unfortunately they failed uh, part of part and parcel i suppose you learn these things when you build the antenna you've got to build it really really strong and you can see there the antenna above is a 70 centimeter 
horizontal Yagi antenna. Uh, a couple of the elements have been bent towards the back. Uh, looks like one's been uh, snapped off the reflector. So, uh, yeah, that uh, does require to be removed. I couldn't do it on the day because it was too windy and too dangerous. And uh, for those that have watched that drone footage, you'll know exactly why I uh, uh, opted to not uh, try to take that down on that windy day. The antenna above is a 23 centimeter antenna, and that antenna actually holds the... Uh, VK ZL record on 23 centimeters, so that antenna has served me very, very well. Both of these antennas, the 70 centimeter and the 23 centimeter antenna uh, pictured, I want to stress they both did not fail. They were absolutely rock solid. The 70 centimeter antenna obviously received a little bit of collateral damage from the 2 meter antenna when it decided to turn into a sail and flicked up and smashed into it. However, both of these antennas come from Goran at antennas-amplifiers. I'll put a link in the description to that particular store and I'll put a little graphic up to show you his uh, store, but he makes very, very good quality antennas. Uh, so very, very pleased at how they've held up. So I guess my next uh, step uh, in this uh, journey with the remote station would be to replace the 70 centimeter uh, the two meter 70 centimeter antennas as they're broken uh, the 23 centimeter antenna looks like it's it's okay so uh, it looks like I might have to purchase maybe another antenna from antennas amplifiers um, I don't think that I'm going to try and do this myself again because obviously the antenna that I built before just wasn't up to the job it's one of the things that you learn I suppose as an amateur uh, especially in trying conditions like this it can uh, with uh, the amount of wind that it gets up there especially with ice and snow as well you need to take that into consideration but uh, I think that I will get uh, another antenna from antennas amplifiers and hopefully get that up on the air soon a few amateurs have made comments to me that they use this station quite regularly uh, for propagation and they found it quite useful and they've also said that they're willing to help out uh, I'm not the kind of person that all, that says that I need help but uh, sometimes I know that it can be of benefit to other amateurs as well. So if you do feel like you would like to uh, donate towards fixing uh, this uh, remote setup, please see the link below in the description of how you can do that and I would appreciate any such gestures towards that. I'll also note too that while the antenna, let me go back here, while the antenna was in that position, I was transmitting whisper for at least 24 hours using 50 watts. Now the radio is an IC9700 and I was very, very worried that the radio was damaged. But one thing to note, and I suppose this is just to show how good ICOM actually is, it was transmitting at SWR, I think it was 4 to 1 or 5 to 1, probably even higher than that on the meter at times when the wind blew. And I was worried that the output power, that the radio would get damaged because of the high reflected power. Running 50 watts like that, you know, could cause a problem. But uh, I brought the radio back, I tested it on the bench, and it's putting out full 100 watts on 2 meters. So the IC9700 actually has a fold-back power protection. So if the SWR is too high, it will reduce the power. And if it's way too high, it will actually shut the transmitter off uh, completely, which I probably think it did in this case. So, yeah, good on ICOM. So, yeah, that's uh, the status of the remote station. Uh, I hope that... Uh, um, I hope that I can get it up in the air uh, very soon. It's about the middle of, it's just past the middle of summer here in Australia. So, um, with uh, how long it takes for the shipping at the moment, I'm not sure that I'll be able to get an antenna uh, up and running there. But maybe I'll put a, a dual band two and seventy centimeter antenna up there instead, and uh, that might be a little bit stronger. So, uh, thanks again for watching this video. If uh, you enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit that like button. I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to the Ham Radio DX channel for more such videos. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. 73.